in this video. I'm gonna teach each and every one of you how to clear your 150 solo with Necro, regardless are you casual or not. And there is no one better to teach you than me. Why? Because I'm a Necro myself. Let's go. Tragul Necro season 27. Look at this beauty. The Blood Baron is back. So at the core of a build, of course, lies when revamped Tragul set. We will use all six piece bonuses that we will need to equip five items plus Ring of Royal Granger, which is in the cube. And we will use helm, torso, gloves, pants, and boots. The whole build evolves around Death Nova, Blood Nova. This will be our main damage dealer. So we will try to besides struggle to apply as many multipliers as we can to it. And first multiplier will come from Funerary Peak. Again, the revamped one, the revamped version of it. This will help us a little bit with single targets and elites. And also it gives us a massive multiplier overall from the new power shift bonus, which is 20% per stack. That means that we will get 200% multiplier, universal multiplier to the whole build against all the enemies, not only the ones that we are siphoning from the life. Another multiplier is the revamped Iron Rose pre Blood Novas, and also it gives us 50% damage multiplier per stack. Overall, it's a 500% multiplier on top of Nova. If we go even further, we will have a multiplier from the Mantle of Channeling, Crispin, and Convention of Elements, which we will cover very soon. And on top of it, on the skill itself, we will put the skill itself on the gear, which is Boots and Helm. And the most important item is Blood Type Blade that gives us 400% increased damage for each enemy hit by Blood Nova, up to 25 enemies. What we want, we want to gather a big healthy pool around us. And when we cast Nova, that's a maximum of 10,000% on top with 10,000% from Tragul. There are two variations of this build. There is the Guardian variation where you use the Guardian set. Also, you can use the Ogild set and I will show you a little bit later that variation. I will say it straight away. For lower Paragon and for its the sake of its synergy, I prefer much more Guardian set. Why? Because Guardian set doubles our main stat from the item and key element here it doubles our vitality as well and that vitality scales very well with a bonus from tragul because tragul for set, set piece will give us 300 percent more healing from our additional skills to maximum life so it scales very well and why is this important again big life doesn't make big toughness trust me this build is very squishy you'll be quite glass cannon very powerful damage very easy to kill even if you'll have up to 7 million sometimes even 8 million depends on your vitality life toughness in this game is much better to have with damage reduction percent that's the best toughness you can get when you need resist all armor maybe and so on life is nothing without that that damage reduction trust me having a big health pool will increase dramatically the toughness of your simulacrums and we need simulacrums alive all the time using guardian i can promise you your simulacrums become almost impossible to kill because their health scales with your health. It's a percentage of your health. The more you health you have, the more tough they are. And 150 is not a friendly place, you know. With Guardian, they are almost indestructible. You don't worry. You cast them once and until, like, unless you die, you'd have not to worry about them. And this is a big bonus because for other builds, the Lodi variation or Ogild variation, they, still can, they can still die, especially like if you get grotesque uh, explosions or you get uh, a poison uh, pools with poison uh, uh, trash, they can die. And then you have to, to waste more of your focus during the push, which is not a, an easy push, to, to see if your simulacrums are up. Also, if you miss them not being up and you take a power pylon or something, you will lose a lot of damage. Simulacrums basically almost triples our damage. It's very important element in this uh, build. So I strongly recommend, especially for low Paragon, under 3000 or 3000, go with Guardian. Its synergy with Vitality is just perfect for this build. We use some additional items, of course, for a Necro. Crispin, it's a must for every pushing build. Crispin is a big, huge multiplier. It's 100% flat, just what you get always because you have uh, 
Bane of uh, Trapped, which slows the enemies. Slowed enemies takes 100% damage. First one is very easy, almost always active. And then the enemies are uh, affected by another CC, which in our case will be stun. They triple this bonus, so 300%. And for stun, on demand, we will have dislocation, which I will cover in how to play the build. And also a random one we will have from Zay, because we're using Zay in this build. So Zay has a 20% chance to hit on hit to stun the enemy for one second and when it stuns straight away it applies the multiplier convention of elements which is especially valuable on necro because it has necro has only three elements so you get your element whatever you use in this case we will use physical you get it much more often than any other class after every eight seconds you get four seconds of pure damage we use mantle of channeling Again, synergizes very well because we will use a lot Siphon Blood channeling skills and while we Siphon Blood, we activate Mantle of Channeling and that goes defense and offense. 25% damage reduction and up to 25% damage increase. We use Haunted Visions for this, so no squirts for this uh, build because Haunted Visions gives us Perma Simulacrums and Simulacrums can duplicate our Death Nova, Blood Nova and they also proc area damage, which is just wonderful. We will use Simulacrum with uh, two Simulacrums rune, Blood and Bone. So whenever we do, instead of doing one Nova, we do our Simulacrums up and we have three Novas. Triple damage, triple win. In cube, as I mentioned, Blood Tide Blade. Then we go, for this variation, we go Akila Curas. You can also go with uh, Dante's Binding. But Aquila is just better because you are always 100% uh, full essence. So Aquila is perma active without, with zero effort. For Dante, you will need to make sure that at least one enemy is also cursed on the screen. If you catch one or two seconds with no cursed enemies, Dante will be down. That, that's enough for you to be one-shotted by some bastard in 150, trust me. So Aquila all the way. Why, why put effort when you can have same effect for zero effort? And uh, for the ring, of course, is Ring of Royal Grandeur. Gems we will use Stricken. We need it at boss fight. Boss fight is the toughest and trickiest part of this build. It's the weakest part of a build. This build is very strong against big pools of enemies. The bigger the pools, the, the better and it's very weak against single target. So we will need Stricken and that's by far not a guarantee that it's enough. Then we use Ban of a Trap. That's again, it's a flat multiplier, 60% at max level. The Stone of Vengeance, this works again is a big multiplier up to 80% for the Feathers enemies. And also it gives us a 20% chance on hit to stun. That means a 20% chance on hit to proc again triple bonus of Crispin. Perfect synergy. If you wonder about Zay, like Zay, this, it says for every 10 yards, but this first multiplier, 15.8, which is up to 16, I believe, applies already even if it's zero for all the enemies within 10 yards, it applies as well. So you get a minimum of 16% multiplier up to 80% for the further away. And our Nova, it's very far away. Gems, we go intelligence, you can go rubies or emeralds if you want more armor it will give you more toughness but still intelligence it's a double win it's still big toughness because of resist all resist all are always good so basically intelligence based they they will always go for for top asses. and also it it boosts your uh, damage a lot so it's i would say go for top asses. you can try rubies if you really have toughness issues but your damage will suffer as well in helm for this build, we don't need cooldown. Hallelujah! Thanks God. So we can easily go with a, a life gem, an amethyst. Again, that scales very well with Tragul. And the weapon, of course, emerald. Stat-wise, what we want, what's very important here, guys, and this took me a while to learn. For this build, it's very, very important, critical, I would say, to hit the a breakpoint in attack speed, and you want at least one dot note it down one dot six seven attacks per second that's the minimal breakpoint you want the more the better but that's the minimal one because then you will have guaranteed two attacks per second two blood novas per second and that's that's a huge difference trust me 
And this breakpoint actually is not so hard to achieve. There are two ways. First of all, if you have attack speed on your weapon, that's the easiest way. You need just two attack speed rolls on other two items, any of them. The easiest one is to get on gloves and tension. We get guaranteed attack speed on Crisbin. Crisbin is always guaranteed attack speed. So basically all you have to do is roll it on your gloves. So on your gloves, you would want attack speed, crit, crit, and ideal area damage maybe, but you can go with intelligence as well, especially at low paragon intelligence is more valuable, I guess. But quad effect works as well. But most important one is attack speed, crit, crit. If you don't have it on your weapon and you don't want to put it on your weapon, you can go for damage and area damage here. Then you will need three items with attack speed. That means that you'll have to have it on your rings plus gloves, the easiest slots. It's not worth to put it on your amulet. Amulet is much valuable to have element crit crit. So again, you have it on the weapon, two more items with attack speed. You don't have it on your weapon, three items with attack speed. Easiest options, rings plus gloves. Comprendo? Comprendo. Let's go further. Sanctification. As I told you, we use the Death Nova power. And of course, the easiest way is to sanctify your weapon. I would strongly recommend against it because it's quite easy to get the primal funerary peak for Necro. Necro has only four scythes, only four options. If you upgrade enough one hand scythe yellows to a cube. So basically what you're doing, you're crafting these scythes. Level 70, or you go for cube, you use rec receipt number 3, upgrade rare item. So on every upgrade, you have a 25% chance for it to be a funerary peak. So it's quite decent chances, and if you upgrade a lot, enough, you'll get it primal. Also, you can reroll it, of course, with bounty materials, with uh, receipt number 2, reforge, which is more targeted. But uh, I got mine through upgrading yellow. So whenever you put it, you put the yellow. Upgrade, transmute, struggle this time, but it's it's just one of four. Easy to get. Trust the process and go for it. Also, it's not always primal. Is uh, primal, of course, is the best. That, but if, if it's not primal, it's not the end of the world because sometimes you can get ancient, like this one, which is very very close to primal. Like it rolled very well damage. Look, you see, damage is almost maxed out. Intelligence, we don't really care because we have Paragon. Area damage and the bonus is close to 300. So this one is not a bad one. So even if it's an ancient one, pay attention to the rolls because sometimes it rolls very close to primal. So it, don't be like so tunneled focused on being it primal. Sometimes not primal can be as good as primal. I use this one for other pushes. It works perfect. If you get a weapon primal, next thing I would recommend to sanctify would be the iron rose. I was fortunate enough to have to, to roll a very good one. This one still lacks, ideally it would be in, instead of vitality to have uh, death nova damage. So what you want on an uh, iron rose, you want damage, intelligence, crit chance, death nova, and area damage. It's very uh, valuable to sanctify this item. In my case, it's not the case, I'm happy with mine. But for you, it might be the case. So sanctify, if once you get the scythe, sanctify Iron Rose. And again, you have to sanctify until you get all the affixes I mentioned. Plus, you have to get the Blood Nova special power. If you get both of these, like me, very good ones, the other thing I would say to sanctify will be Haunted Visions. And here you want Physical, Crit, Crit. If you sanctify Crisbin, you want attack speed. This is not the ideal one, by the way. You want attack speed, crit, crit. I was unlucky, like I went out, out of um, Crucibles at some point. So I went with area damage, which is second best. But you, you want attack speed, crit, crit. And if you have all of these, just sanctify whatever you want. These are the order. Offhand, Amulet, Crisbin. I would focus on this. And I would strongly recommend to Put the effort and do a primal funerary pick. For skills, we will get Simulacrum, Blood and Bone. Next one is Frailty. And Frailty, again, if you want the lazy mode, you can also go for Aura of Frailty. 
but then you'll get like 15 you lose three percent which for 150 push at low paragon makes the difference but if you are higher in paragon you can go with vora this is this will be like the, the lazy mode so they will be like auto curse okay, set and forget for lower paragon and for optimal run i would strongly recommend still early grave bone armor dislocation that's again besides the bone arm armor itself that gives us the increased armor for 10 stacks we will keep it up all the rift but this will be a fundamental leverage it will be proking crispin on demand and by proking crispin i mean proking the second the triple effect of crispin stun triples uh, triples the the multiplier so whenever an enemy is stunned it gets 300 percent multiplier from crispin and we will want to crispin to bone armor enemies right before physical so at the end or at the start of physical at the end of cold just when physical is about to hit boom bone armor and then we siphon blood why we siphon blood just a second blood rush mobility we don't take Subscribe. any room here because we get all the runes from the set this is for mobility and healing as well very important one i'll cover it in how to play the build death nova blood nova we put this on our panel just for our simulacrums to duplicate the to duplicate it like without it on our panel simulacrums will not do the nova that's it we put it and we never use it channeling with iron rose channeling siphon blood whenever we hit a target we will automatically cast three blood novas and with our breakpoint that i covered we will get two blood novas per second very very important element passives we go final service this build is squishy as hell so we will need two procs basically we will have one from our entrance we will have one here for entrance by the way you go standard like you you need the need first of all it to have 25k intelligence and then you need the flavor of time nemesis skill wise this one don't choose anything or choose whatever you want most important is here you get up to 10 percent element, elemental damage we don't need cooldown remember you got a nice shield that still protects us more or less and then you want this the, the cheat death and then we have second cheat death then swift harvesting that's again for attack speed it, it affects the siphon blood and that helps us to achieve that uh, breakpoint spreading malediction quite self-explanatory we will curse a lot so we curse all all the screen basically and for each enemy cursed it's it's one percent and when we hit the right rift it will be huge pools around us so it will be like 30 40 50 percent damage increase huge and send alone for more toughness we are squishy as hell as i mentioned so for more toughness we get the better and this is a non-pet build we, we still have simulacrums too but 80 percent armor which is still a very good bonus and ogil variation is basically almost the same the only thing that we change is we use ogil set instead of guardian set and because ogil doesn't have a, a belt we will use shoulders and bracers then the shoulders mantle of channeling goes to cube and to compensate the lack of Aquila, we will take Dainty Binding on wearing it, which gives us the same maxed out 50% chance of damage reduction. Otherwise, the build is exactly the same. With this build, this is for more like for larger Paragon, for bigger Paragon. You get more damage against elites, you get more toughness against elites. Uh, but as I told you, I really like Guardian more. Like with this one, Simulacrums will be a little bit weaker. It's up to you. If you like this variation, you go with this, but they play exactly the same. It's just this small difference in gear. That's it. How do we play the build? First of all, I know we know we want our simulacrums up as soon as possible, but remember, simulacrums health scales with your health. And at this moment of time, at the start of the rift, you have up to 2 million. Optimal thing is not to cast them straight away. What you want, you want to gather first all 300 stacks from the Tragul 4 set piece bonus. And this is achieved by blood rushing through enemies. Like you want to heal. 
you either heal through enemies, either heal through Siphon Blood. For what you will usually do, you'll combine both. So basically, when we will, when we will heal with Tragul on, let's see a zombie there. You can see I have 1.5 million. Once I start siphoning blood, I'm getting healing and I get these stacks. They go up to 300. So once I get 300 stacks, come on, 300, this is maximum. And it's very easy. You maintain it through the, through the whole rift. Once I get 300 stats here, my health goes to 6 million plus. And if I cast my simulacrums now, they will take this value. Like their health will be in accordance to this value. It will be a percentage of this value. So the more we have, the tougher the simulacrums go. Big key point, don't cast your simulacrum straight away. You enter the rift, you take the first pull or one mob even, you, you want maybe to cast your bone armor to get the stacks, and you just siphon blood it, siphon blood, siphon blood until you get 300. Once you get 300, boom, you hit the simulacrums. That's it. Then, through the rift, it's pretty straightforward. You curse everything you, you see, you move, move around, you give her a pull, decent pull, all you want, this build, this builds damage, again, because of blood type blade, it scales with density, the more density you have around you, the bigger damage you have, up to a cap of 25, so you want always to have at least 25 mobs around you, that's why the rifts, the best rifts are with small or medium mobs as trash, because it's a lot of them, and the rifts, the 150s with big mobs, are quite hard to do because you can't scale up the full potential of your build. So if you get unburied, or if you get like big booties, the big spiders, that usually it's a lose. Like don't waste your time on that. Unless it's like the last uh, floor before spawning the boss and so on. But if you get them as first floor, even if it's forest or battlefield, don't waste your time. Just go away. You'll get the feeling. The more you practice, the more you, you get the feeling of it. When you catch the perfect rift, you'll have tons of mobs around you. Usually it's a cemetery or a weeping hollow, maybe a forest, and you want like uh, medium spiders, small spiders, of course, uh, wild swarms, sure, transformers, yes, like a lot of good mobs. Then you'll get the full potential of a build. So once you get the, the, the pool you want, the deserve, deserve pool, of course, you, you keep your bone armor every time at 10 stacks, and it, it's it's more than enough to keep it up. Once you get the pool, you jump in middle of it, usually. You start to siphon blood. And once you siphon blood, you once you hit the target, as you can see with here, you will start to blood nova everything around you. And then you do this and you watch two elements. You watch your health, first of all, not to die. Trust me, you're very squishy. And you watch the COE. Whenever cold is about to expire, straight away at the end of it, or at, at latest the start of your physical, you want to bone armor. Because bone armor will stun everything around you and they will get triple bonus from Crisbin and also its physical is your window of biggest damage you get because the blood nova is physical damage and it scales with everything with physical from here with physical from the amulet that's the window when you deal the most damage basically the pool will vanish will melt most of it in those four seconds also a very important thing why why that's why you start channeling earlier usually once your pool is ready most of the cases just before you hit your physical like on the during the cold rotation just look around most of the cases you will get the oculus that you your follower will wear the oculus the, the yellow ring if you see it sometimes you don't see it because the pool is very big and it's in the middle of a pool you can't see it but whenever you see an oculus try to jump in it and then hit the bone armor just before physical and then you'll get even more like oculus makes a huge difference you stay in the oculus like say this is oculus and i'm by physical comes jump stun we go for again with channeling also for me that's why i like siphon blood being on left on right click most of the people we use it on left click 
it's a preference options but why i like why i like it here is because on left click to cast it you'll always ha will have to have a target and sometimes especially when you you are in a rush during a 150 when everything hits you you have to be like very very mobile and stuff like that sometimes you might miss like sometimes you even lose your uh, mouse cursor on the screen and if you are not over hovering over some target you will not cast siphon blood while you click you'll just go to there you'll move uh, an option of course is to hold shift like stand still and do it but it's much much easier for me to put it on right on the right click because then it it always cast like channels it and then you all you have to do is like hold right and then just wait then look for an enemy to hover over and it will automatically attack that one pylon wise the most useless one will be of course channeling channeling doesn't really give us a lot because uh, we we are always like we, we don't use essence at all the only thing that channeling helps us with is it gives us like infinite blood rush so we can maneuver easier whenever we are in uh, in trouble we, we can see our health going down we, we feel that we are about to die we will always like blood rush here and there remember whenever you are in a big pool and you do your your cast always watch your health once you feel that your health like go it, it will jump a lot because you are healing a lot back but at, at some point like the the damage will be overwhelming so it will go like half and then you feel when it's going down then just do a small jump still within the pool and then by jumping it first of all you change your position so you can avoid a lot of incoming projectiles from uh, ranged mobs but also you heal remember because of transfusion rune you get two percent maximum health for every enemy you pass through and in these big pools it's it's insta heal like it helps a lot speed helps not so much uh, uh, it helps with breakpoints like you cast much more uh, uh, often the death nova but because it has a dr effect diminishing return effect it it uh, you will stun less the enemies but that's only for enemies near you you will still stun those forever from you so that's fine take speed then of course you have uh, the big ones you have shield which of course protects you and it's much easier this, as this build is very squishy it's much much easier to to use shield and of course power and condi condi you need to kill the elites with this build it's quite hard to kill especially yellows so don't focus on them all you want is to kill big spool of trash and kite the uh, elites with you and slowly kill them like don't focus on elites because once the density goes away the damage of this build drastically decreases you want always big pools around you otherwise you are just wasting your time blues are quite killable yellows almost unkillable manually unless you have like a big open map and you cut them a lot then you, you can still kill them and condi of course that's whenever you see a condi you know how to work like you gather as many packs as you can around it then you take it then you just with flavor of time one minute condi destroy everything around it and power preferably to keep it for the boss it doesn't give you much advantage within the rift even with power it will be very hard to kill elites even with big pools why because with power you will kill the trash very fast maximum in two novas so you'll get two novas at full power maximum usually it's one and then second one is half power once all the trash dies and it dies very fast from power only the elites remain and having only the elites it's not a big multiplier from a cube from a, a blood tight blade that's why it's almost useless to take it during the rift try to save it always for the boss if you get it as a first pylon try to leave it on first floor uh, go clear the rift at 98 percent come back to first floor just leave a little bit of trash there to complete it complete 100 percent on that first floor and you'll have power for the boss for the boss for this build it's almost mandatory to have at least one pylon saved I would recommend even two if you get lucky towards the end of the reef just consider saving the pylons any pylon but conduit conduit it's not worth it a any pylon you need not only for the pylon itself but you need it for extra pack that you get from pylon through nemesis bracers 
because then you'll have this multiplier and you'll have area damage as well. If you are lucky enough and that pack is the illusionist pack, that's the jackpot basically. The more enemies you have within your Nova besides the Rift Guardian, the better, the more damage you have. And of course, like power, it gives you double benefit. You get the pack, also you get the multiplier. Once for, for the boss with this build, you want at least, I would say at least five minutes. Uh, if you have a power, maybe four, three and a half, but not like three is very marginal. Like it's almost undoable. Four plus you are in a good spot. Plus you, you get the guardian. Don't rush to take the, the pylon. First of all, you want to stack your stricken as much as possible. So what you will do, you will cast Siphon Blood on the Rift Guardian. Also, you will hit him with Nova. Stun him if you want on uh, on physical. It doesn't really matter because, well, it matters a little bit, but that, that damage is nothing basically until you take the power. So you want to stack it for several minutes. Once you get to last minute, depends on the pylon itself. Like if, if it's a two minute pylon, like a shield, you might take it with two minutes remaining. Otherwise, you will take it in the last minute. Stack the maximum stricken, take it in the last minute, get the Rift Guardian towards the pack from the pylon, and then try to kill it. Uh, this will be your best shot. Also, of course, because it scales very well with number of mobs you have, you would ideally pray and want a boss with adds. So that's like a Scandial is a very good boss, then you want Saxtri. Saxtri is a little bit difficult until you get it quarter of life down, but once you get it, you get a lot of mobs as well. Red King, uh, Skeleton King, whoever had adds, the more adds, the better. Again, the more adds, the more damage you have. And that's it. Single targets are quite hard to kill. For single targets, you'd usually need two pylons, probably. But it's all trial and, and error. Fake it until you make it. Follow these guidelines and you'll get the result. That why so I would mention besides the attack speed and crits, we also want area damage. This build scales very well with area damage besides the Death Nova and also our simulacrums proc area damage. So I would say try to get around at least 100% area damage, at least. The more the better. Now, as we know, all the theoretical part is time for practice. And for practice, here we go. My 150 clear. You will see everything in action from Subscribe. what I explained to you. Just trust yourself and go for it. Fake it until you make it. I believe in you. You should believe in yourself as well. You can do it. Regardless if you are casual or not. Yeah, yeah, you. I can see you. You can do it.